All right, this is our second installment on contract law, and today we're going to look at broken contracts. And what we need to understand first is that most contracts are enforceable and enforced. An unfair contract does not equate to an unenforceable contract. Bad deals are still legal. You can inflict a bad deal on someone else, they can inflict a bad deal on you, um, and in all likelihood those bad deals are perfectly legal. Overpaying, for example, does not equal fraud. Um, if you've overpaid for something, that doesn't mean the other person cheated you, at least not in a legal sense. However, some contracts may be broken by courts, and that's the first way of breaking contracts we're going to consider. And this can happen if the court finds that a contract is what is termed unconscionable. We're going to throw some more archaic language at you to go with unconscionable. We have egregiously, if a contract is egregiously unfair, and so it's just incredibly fair, uh, unfair. Um, you might say it doesn't pass the smell test. Um, it is just blatantly um, and clearly unfair. If it is harsh in terms of what it uh, imposes on one party, it might be found unconscionable. If it's oppressive, it would be found unconscionable. This can also be in a case, particularly on the consumer end of a contract, um, if a consumer faces a choice that is, one, a take-it-or-leave-it choice. Right? Uh, maybe it's something for that you need. Um, maybe you're caught out in a dangerous storm in a broken-down car, and the tow truck operator presents you with uh, the choice of being left out in dangerous weather or paying a $2,000 fee to have your vehicle towed. Right? That's a take-it-or-leave-it contract that is unfair and harsh and would likely be found to be unconscionable. It's especially true if it's something that is hard to turn down, as clearly was the case with our hypothetical of being stranded with a broken-down car in dangerous weather. It's hard for you to say no to a $2,000 tow, uh, even though you know that that is uh, highway robbery, because your other choice is to remain in a dangerous situation. A contract might also be found to be unconscionable if the two parties have very uneven bargaining powers, kind of symbolized here in this lower um, right corner image. And again here, we could use um, the example of the tow truck driver and you, the stranded driver, in unsafe weather. The bargaining power is very uneven. The tow truck driver has the power to save you from a dangerous situation or leave you in that dangerous situation with perhaps little hope that someone else will come along to help. That's very uneven bargaining power. And that um, might go along with all of the other things to make a clear case of an unconscionable contract that a court might strike down. Next, we're going to consider breach of contract. Now, in terms of broken contracts, this is the form of broken contract uh, you are most likely to see. Uh, and in the case of breach of contract, the contract is broken not because a judge has ruled it unconscionable or some other reason unvalid. This is a contract that is broken because one party to the contract has not honored the agreement. Uh, an example of this could be a consumer who refuses to pay for remodeling work on their home. And so a contractor has come in, remodeled a bathroom, and the homeowner refuses to pay the contractor for the work completed. Um, on the other side of this, uh, it could be that a contractor fails to complete paid-for remodeling work. So the homeowner has paid the contract for the work, and the contractor either has not done it or has left the project in a state of incompletion. Uh, both of those cases are breach of contract, one from the consumer side and one from the service provider side. 
these types of breaches can be grounds to sue in civil court. Now, in many cases, remember, we will settle these things out of court through maybe mediation, negotiation, arbitration, but if those fail, then we might see this go to lawsuit in, or this go as a lawsuit to a civil court. There are different options for lawsuit resolution in these cases. Uh, the first is what are called expectation damages. And we'll get into what those mean, but one thing to understand is that when you were awarded expectation damages, what the court is trying to do is create a situation as close to what you would have gotten if the contract had been honored and completed. The second option for a lawsuit is to seek rescission and restitution. Now, again, we'll get into the definition of what this is in uh, future slides, but for now, understand that what rescission and restitution um, as an option accomplishes is returning the situation of both parties to what they had before there was a contract. So it returns them to the pre-contract situation. And then third is specific performance. And this, like expectation damages, is meant to create a situation as close as possible to what would have been if the contract were completed. Now let's look at each of these options in turn. Right. First, expectation damages. Right. This is going to be a payment. Right? You're going to get a payment that is the difference um, between, on the one hand, what you received from the other party, and on the other hand, what the party was supposed to provide to you. For example, let's imagine that you have ordered two pair of gaming headphones online for $30 each. But when you open the box, you find that the seller has sent only one pair. If you take the seller to court seeking expectation damages, you will have filed a breach of contract lawsuit, and in this case, if it's pretty clear that you ordered two, paid for two, and received only one, the judge orders expectation damages of $30, the exact amount that is the difference between what you paid um, and the value of the goods you received. All right, rescission and restitution. In this option, uh, the court cancels the contract. Right? This is the rescission. You will receive back what you provided. You have no further obligation under the contract. However, you must return what the other party provided to you. For example, Let's stick with our gaming headphones uh, hypothetical here. If one of the two pair of $30 gaming headphones you ordered arrives defective, then you might seek rescission and restitution. Right? The judge could rescind the contract, right? canceling, rescinding. These are all other words, ways of saying rescind, rescission. The judge rescinds the contract. The seller must refund you $30 for the defective headphones and you must return the defective headphones to the seller. Now, clearly, as you can see from this, this works um, most uh, efficiently when we're talking about tangible goods, right? You've not received a service that you can't give back. Uh, you've received a tangible good that you can repackage and return to the seller. All right. The next method, specific performance, this applies um, very clearly to the cases of services provided, although as we will see, it can also apply to cases where there has been an exchange of money for goods. Now, in the case of specific performance, what you're going to ask the court in your lawsuit is to order the party in breach of the contract to hold up their end of the deal, right? to fulfill the contract. 
So in this case, the party who breached the contract is going to keep what you provided. So if we return to our example of the contractor at the very beginning of this presentation, if you've hired the contractor to remodel your bathroom, they have not done it, and you get a court to order the specific performance, that contractor is going to keep your money. But they must then, by court order, honor their end of the contract. So they're going to have to complete that work. This does also work with our uh, example of gaming headphones. Just as with our first example, um, if you order two pair of gaming headphones online for $30 each, but the seller sends only one, you could demand uh, specific performance in your lawsuit. Right? What would happen is uh, you would file a breach of contract lawsuit, and then the judge would order that seller to send you the other pair of gaming headphones. Uh, one of the things to understand about uh, civil lawsuits for breach of contract is that there are going to be limits on damages. And those limits to damages are going to be based on something called the duty to mitigate that the party bringing the lawsuit um, must perform. So this duty to mitigate limits damages by uh, and based on your ability to mitigate, uh, which means your ability to make your losses in the dispute less severe. Uh, to illustrate this and really give it a fuller explanation, let's uh, consider kind of an extended example here. Let's imagine that you have put your car up for sale at the price of $3,750. Um, you get some calls. You get five offers for $3,000. The winning offer, though, comes from Doug. Right? Doug has offered you $3,500, and you take it. Right? That is uh, solidly above the other offers, and you and he sign a contract. But then Doug... Doug, 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 Doug does not honor the deal, right? He refuses to pay for the car, right? You've completed the contract, and he's not following through. You take this to court, you file a civil lawsuit, and the judge only awards you damages of $500. Why? Well, the reason for this is the judge determines that you have a duty to mitigate. You have a duty to take the steps that you can, stay, you can take to make your losses less severe. And so the judge determines, hey, if you've got five other offers at $3,000 each, you can sell this car for $3,000. All you're out is the 500 additional dollars you would have gotten from Doug. So the judge makes Doug cough up $500, and then you are free to accept one of those $3,000 offers for your car. So you've met your duty to mitigate. Um, the judge has ensured that you're going to do your best to do that, and the judge awards you $500, and, th and that is the resolution. But that duty to mitigate certainly does limit your damages, and you need to understand that in the event that you should ever think you want to take a breach of contract suit to court. And with that, um, our look at contract law is completed. Um, there will be some lessons in review to follow up with, so um, keep an eye out for those, and I will see you in class.